Welcome. So this is the SFU Medical School Information Session. And this session is being hosted by the Office of the Vice President Academic, the VPA, with support from Simon Fraser University's Morris J. Wask Center for Dialogue. And on behalf of both organizations, I wanna thank you for joining this important discussion. So we're all here today to learn more about SFU's plans for the proposed medical program, and most importantly, to hear from you, the SFU community. So we recognize how busy you all are, especially on a Monday. So we really appreciate you spending part of your afternoon with us. Thank you. So before going further, I wanna remind you that we're gonna be recording uh, today's presentation portions of the information session. The response to this session was really strong and we wanna make sure that the recording is available to anyone that was on the wait list as well as those who are not able to join us today. Please note, we of course are not gonna be recording in the breakout discussions. So if you feel more comfortable, you're welcome to turn off your camera for this section. And given the size of today's session, all participants are gonna be muted for the plenary discussions. And then we're gonna be unmuting everyone for the breakout discussions that will follow. I'm really pleased to also share that today we have live captioning available and you can access the closed captioning by clicking the live transcript button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And for those of you that requested closed captioning, please ensure that your Zoom name matches your registration name so that we can assign you to the correct breakout room. We're also really fortunate to be joined by two registered sign language interpreters. And so to keep the interpreter's video visible, please feel free to use the pin video function. And you can find this by hovering on the top of your screen and pressing pin. If you do require ASL interpretation for the breakout room discussions, please reach out to our tech host prod. And throughout this workshop, we're gonna be supported by two of our wonderful colleagues at the Center for Dialogue, Prod and Salam. So you can reach out to them at any time directly in the chat if you have any questions. So to get things started, I thought we would um, find out a little bit more about who's in the room today with two very simple poll questions. So Salam, I'm wondering if you could put up the poll questions. Wonderful, so if we can just take a couple of seconds, these are very quick. There's two questions to answer. The first is, please select which best represents you. And the second is, how familiar are you with the proposal for an SFU medical school? And I see all of you, there's, it's wonderful. We already have 127 of you here, which is terrific. And I see that the questions are coming in or the, or the answers are question, uh, coming in really quickly. So we'll give it 10 more seconds or so. Thank you very much. I see that 70, 80% of you have participated, which is terrific. So if we can just share those results of the poll, that would be wonderful, Salam. Excellent. So here it shows that there's actually a really nice mix, which is what we were hoping. So today we have about half of you are SFU staff. There's about 15% of you that are faculty, a third that are students, and about 20% that are alumni. And then if you go down to the next question, which is how familiar are you with the proposal for an SFU medical school? 6% are very familiar, 50% uh, are somewhat familiar and 45% are not at all familiar. So that was exactly, uh, I think what we were hoping for with this information session. All of us hopefully at the end will be a little bit more familiar with this proposal. So for our events, uh, we always wanna start off in a good way, which means beginning by paying tribute to the land that we live on, that we work on and that we play on. And I would encourage you to do the same right now to just take a moment from wherever you're joining us. So I want to uh, mention that I'm respectfully joining you from the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. And it is now my great honor and pleasure to welcome Margaret, uh, sorry, Elder Margaret. So Elder Margaret was born in Skawaluk First Nation and was raised in Ruby Creek by her grandparents. Margaret attended school on her reserve and graduated from UBC. She has been involved in a variety of events and activities within the Tsleil-Waututh community where she lives. And she's also very active in the broader Vancouver community area as well. Margaret is one of the elders of the SFU Elders Program, where she enjoys working with SFU Indigenous students and the broader SFU community. So please join me in welcoming Elder Margaret. Elder Margaret, over to you, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Oh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Thank you for taking the time to attend this um, very important event. It's an honor to be here with the president and many staff from SFU. We are on the territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tisleiwitus, and right now I'm at Tisleiwitut Nation. Just a quick prayer and you can get your event going. Great Spirit, thank you for bringing us together today. Just guide each and every one of us on the path that we are on, taking care of our children and our elders. I ask Great Spirit to bless each and every one's family, especially those who are in, who have been in isolation for the last number of months. I ask Great Spirit just a very special blessing on this event, on my relations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Margaret, for that beautiful prayer and for starting us off in a really good way. And we know how busy you were and just really appreciate you being here with us this afternoon. So thank you. So before we get started with the presentation, I do have a few quick house uh, housekeeping items to review with all of you. I'm wondering if we can have the agenda slide please put up. So we have a very ambitious agenda. We have an hour and a half uh, together with all of you. And so we want to try to maximize room for discussion and room for the Q&A and the presentation. So we're starting right now with the welcome. We'll then have a presentation. We'll have a section for questions from the community. And then perhaps most importantly, we'll be dividing everyone up into breakout discussions, hearing directly from you. And then we will be doing some closing remarks. Our ultimate goal today is to provide a safe and respectful environment. And I just wanna remind you that as part of your registration, all of you committed to participating in a respectful manner and to building a safe and welcoming space for everyone. So anyone who incites harm, be it through the chat, through the video or audio functions will be removed at the discretion of our technical team and moderator. And I certainly don't expect this to happen, but we feel it's really important to make sure that we're protecting both participant, but also speaker safety. So it is now my great pleasure to welcome Joy Johnson, SFU President and Vice Chancellor, and Catherine Deverne, SFU's Vice President, Academic and Provost. Joy and Catherine, thank you for being here with us and the floor is yours. Well, thank you ever so much, uh, Michelle. Um, I, it isn't a pleasure to be here today. And I also wanna thank Elder Margaret for starting us off in a good way. Um, I'm here on Burnaby Mountain today on the traditional unceded territories of the Suelatuf, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Coquitlam people. And it is indeed a pleasure to have our campus on these lands and very important for us to acknowledge uh, the lands that we're on. Um, I'm going to just make a few introductory comments and um, then I'm going to pass it over to Catherine Deverne Verne to give uh, the more, more of the details. And I think um, we can, I think there's a slide deck that we can utilize so we could bring up that slide deck, that would be great. Um, so really um, my job is to talk about why we're here and where we're at. And I just wanna really emphasize that it's early days. Um, uh, we are in the very beginning stages of planning. And um, I think this is why we wanted to reach out to our community um, because uh, as a university, it's very important um, that we get the input of our faculty, staff and students as we begin to plan programs. I do wanna say though, I'm really excited about this opportunity. We know in Canada, these opportunities don't uh, appear very often to develop new uh, medical curricula. And it's a chance to uh, vision a different way of thinking about medical education. It's a chance for us to really think about what's required um, from our communities in British Columbia and to really um, you, you know, inspire ourselves, I think, um, uh, and think through whether there might be possibilities um, to offer a different kind of medical programming. So um, uh, as I said, uh, and as was mentioned early on, I think the most important part of today will be to hear from you and to, to gather up some of your ideas. But maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll have um, us move to the next slide and I'll talk a little bit about where we're at in the process. 
So um, what happened is that in the NDP platform, when they were going into the election phase, there was an announcement that there would be a new medical program in British Columbia in partnership with the Fraser Health Authority and the First Nations Health Authority. Um, you know, SFU has been in discussions for a number of years about medical programming at SFU. Um, and so while we have that background and that history, I think it came to us as a surprise to many of us to see it, um, this announcement in the NDP platform. Um, but we, we felt that this was an opportunity that we couldn't um, let go to waste. And certainly um, the government um, is give, has given strong signals that this is a direction they want to move in, uh, move toward. After announcing that in their platform, um, uh, all government ministries get mandate letters that indicate what they need to work on um, during, their, um, during their tenure as a minister. And so our Minister of Advanced Education, uh, Skills and Training, and our Minister of Health both receive directions in their mandate letter, letters that they should work towards the development of a new um, uh, medical program. Uh, the lead for the programming um, is the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training. And we are working with them um, around um, next steps and how to move forward. Uh, there's been a little detail called the pandemic that's consumed a lot of their time. And uh, I don't think we've received as clear direction as we might, might have wanted to, in part because there's so much else happening in both the health space, but also in the education space. Um, but we are um, committed to working with them, and we have indicated that we're moving forward with some more detailed planning, including consultations such as the one that's taking place today. Um, I think that this, as I mentioned, really represents an opportunity to think about the future of medicine as well. Um, and it's an opportunity that we believe to, to really think about new approaches. There have been some really important um, um, uh, studies that have been done, particularly, for example, on uh, racism in our medical health system, anti-Indigenous racism in particular, that really pushes us to think anew about how one might be able to think about um, medical education in a new way. We had always proposed a different kind of medical program, one that would particularly focus on primary care and team-based um, and team-based um, um, delivery of care. And from the very beginning, we've been really wanting to know that we want to um, that we want to really develop as much as possible a, a, a partnership working with First Nations Health Authority and Fraser Health. So I'm going to pass it over to Catherine, um, and Catherine Skook is the lead for um, the program as our provost and vice president of academic is the lead. And I'm gonna ask her to provide a little bit more detail about where we're at. And then um, we'll be diving into some of your questions, but also um, uh, looking forward to the breakout sessions. So over to you, Catherine. Thank you very much, Joy. Um, it's fabulous to have the interpretation on the screen because it means that I don't have to ask if people can hear me. <laughs> I get a visual representation that the tech is working. So thank you so much for that, Monica, as well. Um, what we've been doing in the past few months is working with our partners, Fraser Health Authority and First Nations Health Authority on building a foundation for collaboration. And this is, uh, is really um, interesting and creative work. And it's fair to say that we, uh, we can't find other precedents of medical schools that have been developed in partnership with health authorities. So we're also at the very beginning of figuring out how a partnership like this uh, will work. It's, uh, we are all agreed on the, and, and really this is the reason why the province would, uh, would commit to a new medical program, is we really do need more primary care physicians uh, throughout this province across the country and probably in many places all around the world. Primary care is not only uh, about having a family doctor, but there are a number of, uh, of areas that like, you know, general internists, general surgeons, all sorts of of um, specialties that are that are in high demand uh, and need to be available all across the province. So, um, of course, we're interested in uh, producing graduates who are interested in being family doctors, but also who are interested in uh, a broader vision of what primary care is. 
We are also um, really wanting to have a school and a curriculum that focuses on community embedded, socially accountable, and culturally relevant healthcare. And uh, you know, I I think it's really important to acknowledge that medical schools across Canada and in many places in the world uh, care deeply about um, socially accountable and culturally relevant medicine. Um, so it's not as though uh, having these priorities is, uh, is the sole thing that is going to differentiate our program. But we're in a really unique position to be able to think about these, uh, these values that we share with our partners right at the beginning. Uh, and to work on um, situating this school uh, from the ground up to embed these values and reflect these values and actually um, do everything we can to influence the students both who will find this kind of a program attractive to enter and also to uh, really think about the how we will influence their choices as they as they receive their professional training and then make decisions about um, which communities they want to serve after graduation. So I think from the perspective of the provincial government, the provincial government really has a priority to transform the healthcare system from a physician led acute care focus towards team team based um, preventative care. And we really want to provide a program that uh, that trains students to fit into that team-based um, and uh, team-based preventative community connected model. So we're, you know, we're envisioning a program where students spend much less time in hospitals, for example, and much more time um, in community clinics and, uh, and in GP's offices. So uh, with the new medical school, we're working with our partners on uh, on developing this, these kinds of elements of vision of the school before we start developing any particular curriculum or engaging with an accreditation uh, approach, because we want to make sure that we prioritize um, we prioritize these particular things. So we really are envisioning a medical program that has a focus on. Uh, both indigenization broadly, but also thinking very carefully about indigenous healthcare uh, traditions and, um, and appropriately valuing and prioritizing those. We also um, are really attentive to the needs of newcomers to Canada. The Fraser Health Authority um, is, uh, covers a geographic area which has um, the largest percentage of newcomers of to Canada of, uh, of any similar size geography anywhere in the country. So our healthcare partners are really helping us to focus um, on the needs of these particular communities. And um, that's exactly, uh, you know, that's what makes the proposal exciting for us. Um, and although I've been talking a lot, I do have a, a few more things to say if we move on to the, uh, to the next slide. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, where we are right now in terms of the slide that you were looking at a few moments ago, which talks about our plan for engagement. So we're really um, thinking about engagement in two ways. We're thinking about engagement with the SFU community. So uh, that starts here today with uh, faculty, staff, students, and I think there are uh, some alumni uh, on this, uh, participating in this session as well. Um, this is the, the first um, largest information session. We also will have, um, we also actually were a little bit surprised um, to find that there were lots of people who wanted to uh, join up to this session, as Michelle mentioned at the beginning, um, whom we just couldn't accommodate. So we're recording this plenary portion of, of the session so that uh, people can um, come to the um, SFU medical program webpage that we're developing on the VPA portfolio, portfolio website uh, and take a look at this session after it's done. Uh, you'll also find there um, a survey up so that we are gathering views over the next two weeks um, about uh, from our SFU community about questions and ideas that people have about the new school. 
And then um, following that survey, we're going to develop a series of targeted workshops. Again, I think most of these will probably be online uh, with uh, key groups around our campus who let us know that they're particularly interested in this. Um, the other thing that we're uh, doing is we're starting uh, we're starting just slowly into a bit of external engagement to reach out to um, key communities um, that we hope that this school will serve. And we're moving um, slowly in this space because this is work that we are doing in, com in partnership um, with the health authorities. And it's also, you know, we, we want to be very careful when we go out to community and ask people for their time, their energy and their ideas um, that uh, we want to be, to be sure uh, that we know exactly where we're at in the process and that we're happy to share that. So we want to be sensitive to the fact that we, uh, we are not fully funded and ready to go yet. And um, there will be opportunities other opportunities uh, in the future once we're a little bit further uh, down the planning track to uh, do more engagement, both internally and externally. And so um, we're really thinking of this external engagement uh, right now as a pre-engagement phase. And, um, and it will start slowly in 2022. And I, I envision that over the several years that it will take um, to develop this program, that we will probably be um, engaging with different communities at different times, really uh, across the next three or four years. So I think I'll, um, I think I'll stop there so that we can uh, turn to questions. So back to you, Michelle. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Catherine and Joy. And I was just thinking about the poll results that we received where so many people are new to this uh, proposed medical school. And I really feel that, you know, the information that you provided is a really good first start for folks to be able to dive deeper into those breakout conversations. So wonderful. Okay, so it's just going to be, now I have the pleasure essentially to build off of what you just presented and ask you a few questions. And so I just want to remind everyone that what we did is as part of your registration, we invited you to ask your questions. And so we received so many questions and there were so many questions that we knew we wouldn't be able to get to all of the questions today. So what we did is we actually grouped your, we collected your questions, we grouped them and then we themed them. And what we did is we came up with your top five questions. And so I want to mention that, you know, rest assured for the questions that we don't or aren't able to answer directly today, we're collecting them. We're going to continue to collect them over the coming weeks. And we're going to use these questions to inform uh, future SFU planning and communication. So uh, really looking forward to these top five questions with both of you. So Catherine, the first question is for you. And this is by far the number one question that we received. When is the program going to be launched? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I really, um, uh, I would like to think that uh, once it's fully funded and um, we have a complete commitment and agreement about scope with the province and with our health partners, that it takes between three years and four years to have a program up and running. Um, we're in the early phase of planning work and, um, and we're he here we are in the fall of 2022. Mm -hmm. So I think three to four years means that in an, it means that in a very optimistic vein, where does that take us? The fall of 2025 or the fall of 2026 is when I think we might be able to um, open our doors to our inaugural class if, if wow. all goes well. So uh, there really are, um, a, you know, like my, my fantasy timeline starts with uh, uh, an announcement in the provincial budget in the spring of 2022. And after that, um, we would immediately begin one of the most important um, uh, sort of markers on our timeline, which is the search for an inaugural dean. Mm -hmm. Um, at least, uh, although there are many things I don't know about medical schools, I do know um, that the timeline for hiring a dean uh, sort of is a six to eight month, it's a six to eight month undertaking. Um, and, you know, we would, uh, as we do with all our decanal searches, really look all around the world um, to 
see who's interested in uh, in taking up this challenge. Um, it will be an incredibly exciting job. And you know, there are uh, there's a project office um, inside uh, inside my office right now. There are. Um, you know, there is at least one person who works on nothing but this every day right now. But before we open, uh, before we open a medical school, we're going to have to have quite a lot more than that. Uh, we're going to have to recruit some faculty. Uh, we're going to have to probably build some buildings. Uh, we're going to have to make a curriculum. We'll need to get accredited and, um, and we'll need to figure out an admissions plan. And we're going to need to recruit some students and then we're going to need to admit them. And then we'll be ready. Yeah. And you know what's so helpful about that, Catherine, as you mentioned, you know, most of us on the call today, we're new also to this idea of, you know, a proposed medical school. So I think, you know, a couple of things that you mentioned. First, I mean, I love the word fantasy with timeline. I never hear those two words together, but I love that you described, you know, your fantasy timeline. And I think it shows like this is really a long process and we're right at the beginning. And I think that's why this conversation is so unique because we're right at the early stages. And this is why we wanted to have the conversation with the SFU community to get your initial ideas before we move forward with some of those subsequent steps. Um, Joy, I'm just wondering, is there anything that you wanna add related to what Catherine mentioned or should we jump into the next question? The, the one thing I would add, I just wanna kind of draw a line under it is that you know, we are still in conversations with the government. And while they've given us strong signals, we still do not have a budget commitment. So all of this is contingent on getting that final budget contingent. And I do want to say the SFU community, we are, uh, I think Catherine and I are both uh, totally on board that we're not going to launch a program unless it's fully funded. Okay. Um, and that's really important because we don't want to we want to make sure we're not taking resources that are going to our existing programs and trying to divert them into this program. Uh, and so that's something that we're very, very mindful of. And I think it just need to make sure that we're putting that uh, on the table today. Yeah, no, that's really important before we get too excited to be able to really take stock of where we are today. Um, so Joy, a question for you. This is a really interesting one that we heard from many people. How do we measure success? with this proposal, with this proposed medical school? Well, I think the first uh, symbol of success is that the program gets accredited. Um, and I think that's really important to bear in mind. Um, medical education, medi uh, you know, they, these do need to be accredited programs. But one thing I will say is what's really exciting and having had some initial discussion with those who are involved in accreditation, is that um, I, I think there is some opportunity to think very creatively about how students in a program, uh, a new program might meet accreditation standards. It's not necessarily through the, you know, what gets referred to as the traditional medical education model. There are new models that we can utilize and it's really exciting to think about that. So uh, that would be number one is accreditation. Um, but I think that we're also thinking about training um, or educating a different kind of physician. And so um, we would really hope to see um, uh, uh, physicians who really are embodying um, the values um, of this new program, who have an understanding of how to work with um, our Indigenous communities, who really have a deep understanding of how to infuse their practice with um, understandings of equity and inclusion. I think that's really important, um, uh, an important marker um, for us to bear in mind. It certainly is an important for our partners in particular. We'll also be tracking the, where they end up um, working. Um, I think that we do um, hope to um, provide education for individuals who are passionate about working in primary care and team-based care. And so we'll track where they go, where they land, what kind of roles they take on. And not all of them will do that. Some might follow other passions along the way, but it is our hope that they'll bring that understanding with them. You know, one thing I will say that's come up quite a bit in thinking about medical education is what gets referred to as the hidden curriculum. Um, and that's something I'm really mindful of as we move forward in planning. You might have the best curriculum in the world, but where those, where your students, how they get exposed to ideas and how they get kind of quote indoctrinated um, is also really important. So that's also why it's so important to work with our partners, First Nations Health Authority and Fraser Health Authority 
because Fraser Health, for example, has some really wonderful team-based primary care clinics where new models are being developed and First Nations Health Authority as well is really doing some interesting work. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you can kind of expose mm -hmm. um, uh, students to a different way of thinking and doing um, medical work. So uh, I would say those are a few um, of, the, of, uh, of the markers we'll be looking at um, as we move forward. And um, I'm, I'm, as the curriculum evolves, um, so, will, so will our um, understanding of metrics we might want to utilize. Catherine, did you want to say anything else on that one? Uh, I don't think so. It, it's a really good question, what counts as success. Uh, I was speaking a couple of weeks ago with the current Dean of the Northern Ontario Medical School, which is the uh, school that, that uh, opened most recently in Canada. So um, there's, there is another school at Ryerson University uh, in the planning stages, but NOSM um, has been open for about 20 years and they, they do now have data. You know, they did um, uh, have a very clear goal of trying to serve Northern Ontario communities, including First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people in Ontario, as well as um, as well as Francophone communities in Northern Ontario. And um, they are now in a position, so this is 20 years on, where they have a reasonable amount of data that demonstrates that they are reaching that goal. That's not every single uh, graduate of their school, um, but uh, you know, sort of two thirds of the graduates of this, their school are ending up in places where they thought they would be. But the Dean was saying to me at, at that time, you know, of course we still need more data and a longer time and to see what people do with the whole arc of their career. And I thought, wow, you know, we're, we're really in it for the long haul. And uh, the question of success uh, is an ongoing one that we will, there's going to be opportunities to say this stage was successful, that stage was successful, but we're also going to have to, um, in order to have uh, a school that remains socially relevant and um, community embedded, it's going to have to evolve over time. Yeah. And I love th that those were, you know, terrific answers. And I'm, I'm really happy, Joy, that you were able to talk about accreditation, too, because that was another theme that came up, you know, uh, quite heavily in our in our um, registration. So thank you for speaking to that. And it's also interesting, Catherine, how you mentioned that we're all we're learning from others that have gone through, you know, a similar type of experience. So when you mentioned the, the Northern Ontario Medical School, um, just good for folks to know that we're also connecting with others that have, you know, uh, done a similar journey. So Catherine, oh, go ahead. Yes. Can I just chime in yes. on the accreditation point? Mm -hmm. Because you, you raised that and said that people had been interested in it, you know, um, up until this year, Canadian medical schools have been accredited by a dual process that has uh, some Canadian elements and then um, moves on into the United States for uh, final accreditation with the American body for accrediting medical schools. And um, the Association of Canadian Faculties of Medicine has this year for the first time, um, uh, you know, I think we might say repatriated that uh, process. Yeah. So that medical school accreditation in Canada is now completely within uh, Canada. And, oh, wow. uh, and so, you know, along with um, Ryerson and anybody else who, who um, gets into this, uh, gets into this space in the next little while, we will be one of the first schools going through a made in Canada accreditation process. And there are some important, um, just a measure of, of the point I was making earlier that you know, it, it's um, thinking about community embedded culturally relevant um, medicine is not is not in its that's not where the innovation will come from, it will be on the delivery, those there, those principles are so important to medical education in Canada right now that they're in the accreditation manual. So um, that alone uh, will not get us over the innovation hurdle that is a, a a standard that every single Canadian medical school is required to meet to keep its license. Okay. Um, thank you. And I'm, I'm staying with you, Catherine, for this next question. And this is also good. I think it's a really good segue. This is, we had a lot of questions that were quite specific and, you know, looking at, you know, three years down the road or four years down the road. So it might be a bit early to ask this, but how many students, do we have a sense of how many students we'd be able to take in for this program and any idea initially about requirements for enrollment? 
Um, both really interesting questions. So we have been looking at, um, you know, it, the announcement did take us by surprise last mm -hmm. fall. Happy okay. surprise, but it took yeah. us by surprise. But it it was not like out of the clear blue sky. Mm -hmm. So uh, people at SFU have been interested in working on talking with the government about a medical school on and off, I would say mm -hmm. for about the last decade wow. in, in fits and starts. And it, those conversations have generally been around a relatively small program, you know, 50 or 60 students in a year. Mm. Um, okay. I'm not sure that's where we will end up. Mm. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we will need to develop a faculty. We will need a certain number of faculty in order to meet accredit accreditation requirements. Having a, a school of 50 or 60 people, I think, um, the Northern Ontario Medical School is just a little bit bigger than that. Um, I don't think it's 70. I think it might be at 65. Uh, somebody on this call will know yeah. the answer to that question because they'll have looked at those numbers uh, more regularly than me. But one of the consequences of a very small school is that your cost per head is very high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, you know, I, I think we are um, back to your graph at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm will do quite a lot of financial analysis as part of developing even this first proposal. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and my guess is that we may end up with a larger number than 60. Mm -hmm. We might end up with 100, we might end up with 120 over time um, it, because that's a part of, of the um, of cost efficiency. Mm -hmm. And also there's a tremendous need for more physicians in yeah. this province. So I think, uh, I think if it makes sense to start a new medical program, it probably makes sense to start a medical program that's not, you know, we are not going to be at the 300 students a year that the University of British Columbia is taking in. Um, and, uh, and we are going to make sure that we, you know, you can't, uh, you can't build a program that doesn't attuned to how students will be placed in residencies at the end of the program or indeed in clinical placements uh, through through their earlier education. Um, so those are the, some of the things mm -hmm. that we're thinking about and some of the, the numbers that we're playing with. Yeah. Um, and you also asked me about admissions. So for mm -hmm. some time we had uh, talked about um, having a made in SFU uh, program that uh, that offered students a couple of years prior to a sort of a fast track entry into mm -hmm. medical school. That is uh, an idea that I'm not sure people are still interested in, and these are questions that we're we're going to work through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering, Joy. I was seeing that you're nodding. Is there anything that you want to speak to related to you know the the requirements piece or the numbers? Anything to to add to what Catherine shared? No, no, I think that's that's great. I mean, mm. I, I will say, you know, back in the day, um, uh, McMaster University was considered groundbreaking in their um, approach to medical education because they started to take in people who didn't have, quote, the basic sciences mm. and um, and 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 people recognized these students could do very well. Yeah. Uh, and I think there is an opportunity mm. to think a little bit differently about what is what is required to get into medical education and then how to support students once they're in a program like this. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, um, some sciences are required and will be needed, but I think we, we need to think broadly. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that we also need to think very carefully about pathways for indigenous students into this program. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing that will be on our mind a great deal as we, as we plan and in particular work with our First Nations Health Authority. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So this is another, you know, specific question. A question about, you know, we've we've spoken about uh, the region, perhaps, but do we know where the school will be? And do we know if it'll be connected to an existing hospital? So I, I pose that to both Catherine and Joy, whoever wants to take that question. You can start, Catherine. Uh. <laughs> You know, we've we, we really have uh, heard in a couple of announcements now that uh, that we're thinking of locating uh, a core part of this program on our Surrey campus. Um, 
And, uh, but I, th I think that it also makes sense, uh, particularly back to the question of, of basic science. Um, so, you know, many medical schools across Canada right now, their one required undergraduate course is actually English. Um, okay. and, uh, and, you know, medical education then takes on the responsibility for training in basic sciences and builds that into its curriculum. And, uh, you know, we, especially as we're very hopeful to have a new integrated life sciences mm -hmm. building on the Burnaby campus, uh, I really think this may well be uh, a program that has a headquarters in Surrey that has, you um, you know, uh, educational opportunities in a few different places. And then where throughout, um, you know, throughout their education, where students uh, go to different places uh, around the region and uh, around the province to ensure that they have clinical experience, experience in, in communities. I think there's, um, there's a lot of really important uh, work to be done with our First Nations Health Authority mm -hmm. Partnership to ensure that uh, that we are graduating students who've had experience working in Indigenous right. communities, and um, that you know some of those communities are are really uh, we share we're on their territory, but you know it's also important that students see communities that are that are rural and and mm -hmm. far away from the urban centers where all of our campuses are located. Mm -hmm. And, and Joy, I mean, one of the, the fun parts about being the moderator is I get to throw in another question. I have a question for you, and I know, you know, Catherine spoke a little bit about the, the broader engagement process, but, you know, if you were to share one goal that you have for, for the engagement process, is there something in particular that you're, you're most looking forward to with that engagement piece? I guess um, through the engagement, um, I'm, I'm hoping I'll learn more. I mean, I think this is an opportunity um, to think creatively, think differently, and, um, um, and challenge ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm not naive about this. I know some people are very concerned about what a medical program might do mm -hmm. to Simon Fraser University. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I want to say from the very outstart, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not naive about that, but I want to I want to think it through. Uh, I want to trouble this a little bit mm -hmm. and I want to think a little bit about how we also could benefit and, mm -hmm. and what a new program like this could be. I think it could actually be a beacon for Canada and the world if we get it right. Mm -hmm. And so it's to me, it's it's an incredible opportunity from that standpoint. So I'm hoping from the engagement process that new ideas will get thrown out yeah. and people will, you know, um, have their questions answered mm -hmm. and we'll yeah we'll move forward together yeah and that's just so perfect uh because it's really related to why we're convening this conversation today and some of the questions that you just asked are the questions we're actually going to be asking folks in the breakout groups and i love this framing about what could it be because we're in those initial stages we can still have those big questions so um to close the, the, the Q&A portion, I have a question for both of you. You know, uh, Catherine, you use this, um, you know, timeline of four to five years, for example. When we look ahead, you know, what excites you most about this project? I know it's a big question, but I'm presumably it's occupying a lot of time and thought for you. So what, what you know, keeps you going? What makes you look forward to the next four to five years? Uh, you know, the opportunity to start something from the ground up is really pretty yeah. Well, these uh, these chances uh, don't come along very often, and it is really exciting. Um, it's a project that uh, that forces me, you know, every single day, every single meeting, I think really quite far into the future, and uh, and that's um, almost inherently optimistic. So. Mm. That's what's exciting about it. Ah, I love that. Inherently optimistic. That's what we need, like some optimism. So that's great. Thank you. Joy, what about you? You know, um, I, I do have to say that um, in the short time since I've been president for the past year, and it's kind of have been thrown onto the agenda, we've had people reach out to us from across Canada saying, this is an incredible opportunity, SFU. How can I help? How can I get in bo on board? And this is accreditors. These are people from our College of Physicians and Surgeons. These are people who see this as you know, um, an opportunity. So that excites me a great deal. I would say for me in particular, um, I'm excited uh, about the opportunity to 
to really contemplate how we might integrate Indigenous ways of knowing into medical curriculum a little bit differently. It's not often these programs, a medical education in Canada, there's kind of a side unit or it gets added, but it's not central. And I think there is a different way we could begin to think about this in talking to our First Nations health authority partners. And that would be revolutionary for Canada. Um, this is a time when reconciliation is on all of our minds. And I think there's an opportunity um, to really think differently. And we have some amazing Indigenous physicians in Canada who are really at the forefront of this and wanting to push our thinking in this regard. And, I, and in saying that, I'll say this is good for Indigenous communities, but it's good for all of us. And we've seen that models like this, like just really um, helping us think through about how to, to just be in a different kind of relationship with clients um, in, the health, in the health system, how to work in teams in different ways. So I think it's, uh, it's really, really um, exciting to think about. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And that's just one thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's hard when, when I'm asking only for one thing, but I just, I mean, I think this is the perfect note to, to start the breakout conversation. So I just wanted to thank you both for, for sharing a lot of information, for answering those questions. And a big thank you to all the participants that sent, I, I, I wish I had the number, but it's something about probably 75 questions we received. And so we touched on so many of the themes and it was really because of the content you were both able to share. So thank you very much. Um, so what I'd love to do now, we have the slide up, which is great. Uh, so hopefully now you're feeling a little bit more informed, a little bit more updated on what the medical school proposal and proposed program could look like. And so I'm really excited uh, to be inviting you to join some small breakout conversations. So I just wanted to go over a few things related to the breakout conversations. So in your group, you're going to be joined by a breakout facilitator and a breakout note taker. And we're really lucky to have these wonderful note takers because they're going to be capturing all of your ideas so that you can really focus on the discussion. And, and I just want to also note that we are going to be anonymizing or the note takers will be anonymizing all of the notes. So there's going to be no attribution. And because we only have 25 minutes in these breakout groups, unfortunately, we're encouraging you to jump right into the conversation. So to skip a formal round uh, of introductions if possible. And a little uh, another note that we would make is that you might be tempted to turn the breakout conversation into a Q&A. But now that we've had that great uh, Q&A with Joy and Catherine, we'd really encourage you to use this time to share your ideas and your thoughts with us. I also want to note that the breakout facilitators are not necessarily experts on the medical school proposal, and so they're not there to answer those particular questions. Uh, they're there to host um, and, and lead the conversation. So we can go to the next slide, please. So in your groups, you're going to be discussing some of the, follow, uh, the following questions. So the first question, what values and principles should guide our early planning? What is your best advice for SFU as we move forward in the planning for the proposed new medical school? How could SFU best keep you up to date on the planning for the medical school? And whether or not you have any additional comments and questions. And one thing I'll mention is that we've invited the breakout facilitators to start with one of these questions. We're not expecting folks to be able to cover all four questions. The good news is that we have a survey at the end of this session where you're going to be able to provide feedback to all of these uh, additional questions. So this is your time. We want you, uh, as Joy and Catherine men, uh, mentioned, you know, this is kind of this blue sky moment where we can be creative, we can be innovative. So we'd invite you to be candid, to be open. There's no ideas that are bad ideas at this time. So wishing you all a very happy discussion and we'll welcome you back in 25 minutes for some, some, uh, some concluding remarks. So thank you very much. Hopefully you can hear me. We're starting the recording again. I, I know that we had a little bit of a drop off. That always happens when you go from plenary to breakout groups. But I mean, I can only say that as expected, that went by really quickly. And uh, I had the privilege of being in a really intimate group. Uh, and we filled that time so well. And um, the ideas 
the the feedback, the recommendations. Um, anyway, it was so useful and just very grateful to those of you that uh, that stayed on for those last couple uh, couple of minutes. So I want to just offer a few um, concluding remarks before I turn it over to Joy and Catherine for some uh, closing closing reflections. So as I mentioned, we've captured your input. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to give a shout out to all of our wonderful note takers. We had 15 note takers that volunteered to be part of today's session. So they captured everything. And what we're going to do is as a part of this internal process, which Catherine spoke a little bit about, we have today's information session. We also have a series of workshops that we're doing. And we also have a survey, which I'm going to be speaking about in a minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to compile all of the information input from those different sources. We're going to put it together. We're going to summarize it. And we're going to share it in a public what we heard report. So this rep uh, report will be posted eventually to the SFU site and that's really going to be your hub um, for all of the information that are, is related to the um, prospective medical school and the medical school proposal. That website will also include uh, a link to today's recording. So as I mentioned, the reason we're recording the session today is that there were many people who weren't able to join. And we had a big wait list for today's session, so it'll be sent to those folks, but also to anyone who wasn't able to join the session. And we'd invite all of you as faculty, as staff, and as students, if there's anyone that you think could be interested in hearing from, particularly from Joy and Catherine at the beginning of uh, the presentation, please feel free to share this, uh, this link widely. Uh, and lastly, I just want to mention that we have a survey that we've created, and the survey is going to ask the same four questions that we asked today. And so maybe there's a few of you that leave after today and you think, oh, I wish I had shared that piece of advice, or I wish I had shared that question. It's not too late to do that. We're going to keep the survey open for several weeks. And again, we'd invite you as participants to complete the survey, but you're also very welcome to share the survey more broadly within your communities. Um, I also want to uh, say a special thank you to all of our amazing facilitators. Um, as I mentioned, these weren't, you know, medical school subject matter experts, but they were people who are deeply passionate about engagement and all folks that are from our SFU community. So thank you to all of them for joining. Thank you to our IT, ma uh, wonderful IT hosts, Salam and Prod. And what I want to do is, again, thank you to all the participants that stayed, but I want to turn it over now to Catherine and Joy for some closing reflections reflections to see if they want to share any, you know, words of wisdom or things that stood out from the conversations that they were just a part of in their breakout groups. So over to you both. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I want to thank you uh, for doing a great job of facilitating. The time has flown by. That's always a good sign. And uh, again, want to thank the whole team um, for the work that you've done putting this together and the participants for joining in. Uh, I really enjoyed our small but mighty breakout group, I have to say. And I did, I, I have some new ideas. So Catherine, um, they'll be coming your way, I have to say. Um, you know, one question was, you know, how is research going to be incorporated into this new medical school? What, what will the research agenda look like? How will we think about this? How do we embed patients in the process um, um, and, and their families? So, so there was some talk about patient-centered care, family-centered care. And we might be doing this consultation process, but there's an opportunity potentially uh, to build a family or patient advisory committee that could continue to inform the medical program as we move forward. And I thought that was a really interesting idea. Um, we talked about a learning health system. Um, you know, what is the role of a learning health system? So how, how actually do you improve your medical system, your healthcare system um, through medical education as well? And I thought that was really interesting to think about. Uh, keep our students in mind. There was uh, like, think about the transfer for students and engage our students because they care about this program and want to know what's going to happen and want to be ready um, to apply um, when the doors open. So think about them as we're moving forward. And then um, um, maybe as a last note, um, I, I really like this idea as we're moving forward, because we talked about um, phys the physicians will be educating as being part of a system, but let's take a systems approach and let's ask uh, the team members on the, in the system what they need from a physician. What do nurses, OTs, uh, phys you know, uh, physios, um, uh, dietitians need from a physician uh, in that team model? And I thought that was so interesting as well. 
So I want to just, and those are just a few of my notes. So thank you ever so much. I uh, really enjoyed the discussion and i um, really excited about the opportunities. Pass it to you, Catherine. Thank you very much. Uh, um, well, I'm not sure if my group was particularly small or if it was just the right size that everybody got an opportunity to talk. Um, but I think that that my and I do have I do have a lot of notes, but I think my takeaways are really um, that there's a huge amount of enthusiasm for this project uh, from people in all sorts of different uh, in all sorts of different places. And that there's a lot of really, really important questions out there. And I think it's fair to say, like, it was lovely discipline for me to not talk and just listen. And uh, there's a temptation to try and answer many of the questions that people are asking. But the honest truth is that I don't know the answer to many of those questions right now. But what we really need right now is lots and lots of questions so that we understand the answers that we're going to have to have um, if we're going to if we're going to move this forward and so the questions are really helpful and uh just sitting with them is is really uh really useful and valuable for me as opposed to trying to feel like oh well i'm standing at the front of the room so i better figure out some way to answer that but the reality is it's it's in many ways at this stage um, more useful to just honestly say gosh we don't know that and we don't know that and we don't know that either and we're, these are things that we really are going to need to, to know a lot about. And, and we had a great, I heard a lot about um, values and uh, how getting the right people is really important. And um, I'm going to you know, think about that for a long time going forward. So um, I, I join in, um, in thanking you, Michelle, but also thanking everyone yeah. for being here. Yeah, and and thank you both. That was just such a, we weren't sure the number of people we could do, you know, the traditional report back, but you both did a beautiful job of doing a report back. And I'm glad that you enjoyed, you know, being active listeners in those groups. Um, I have just a couple of uh, thank yous. I, I want to thank Elder Margaret. I'm not sure if she's still with us, but, you know, for, for being such a leader within the SFU community and such an ally and, uh, and, and, and we know how busy uh, Elder Margaret was and, and she made time for us today. So we so appreciate that. I wanna thank our closed captioning uh, folks. It was just so wonderful to have. I know Zoom has built in closed captioning, but it was just stellar today, exceptional closed captioning. And I also wanna thank the, the team of ASL interpreters. It was really wonderful to have you be part of the workshop. And I also know what's great is with the recording, you're gonna be able to you know share uh, today's messages and presentations with the broader community when we do post that. And um, I think a, a final thank you to you, Joy, and you, Catherine, for being with us over the last uh, hour and a half for a really honest and candid conversation. And I think, you know, it's exciting because we know we're just at the beginning and all of those ideas and all of those questions, as you mentioned, Catherine, are welcome. So please fill in the survey. If you have any ideas, send them to us and uh, wishing everyone a very happy and healthy rest of the day. So thank you.